So you've bought some awesome new speakers and they don't sound as good as you expected. So now you're wondering if you've set them up right. Or do you just want to find out how to get the most out of speakers you already have? Either way, today we're talking crossovers. No, not those. Stick around. Hey guys, it's the Villa Man, and on this channel we do tech and home theater unboxings, reviews, comparisons, and tips. And this is the first entry in a new series of videos designed to help you learn more about the fundamentals of home theater or just ways to get your system to perform at its best. And we call it Home Theater 101. So subscribe now if you're new to the channel and enable those notifications so you know when the next video drops. In the series, we will discuss the basics and sometimes maybe even controversial topics in the home theater space and help you understand them better and maybe even entertain you while doing so. No promises on that last part though. So in this first episode, we'll be talking speaker crossovers, what they are, how to use them, and why they're important to every system. But to properly discuss crossovers, we have to go back, way back, back to the 80s in the wild west days of surround sound when Dolby Pro Logic ruled the land. Subwoofers weren't commonplace and the only equipment that really supported them were the more expensive audio processors. The receivers and processors that we know and love today was but a dream. So the equipment that people did have didn't have any means of controlling bass. To get any kind of bass management, you'd have to do the adjustments you wanted on the sub itself, and it was by no means an exact science. There was a lot of guessing and trial and error involved. But why does your speaker even need bass management in the first place? I'll get into subwoofers later, but first let's jump into these. Every speaker, including these six I have here, have their own performance characteristics and limitations based on their design. You see, manufacturers often test how well their speakers perform using a measurement mic in an anechoic chamber or in an open field test. They then analyze the results and this is how they determine the plus or minus 3 dB frequency range of the speaker. So they use a test tone which has the same SPL or loudness across a frequency range of say 20 Hz to 25 kHz for example. So the plus or minus 3 dB frequency range is where the speaker produces the tone in a straight line without deviating more than 3 dB up or down in SPL. SPL or loudness is measured in decibels or dB, hence the plus or minus 3 dB. That's the range where the speaker essentially has a flat response. Since the test tone is a frequency with a flat input, we then care about the frequency range where the speaker is able to output it equally as flat. The speaker will have a point where it begins to roll off. This happens when the response is no longer flat. All speakers have this and those are the frequencies beyond the plus or minus 3 dB range. So now that you understand how and why we measure frequency response, we can now look at some practical applications. Crossovers. We use crossovers because the speakers that are in our home theater typically are two or three way speakers, meaning they have either a tweeter and mid range driver for highs and lows in a two way speaker, or a tweeter, mid range, and bass driver in a three way speaker. But they usually can produce bass and low frequency effects LFE as well as a subwoofer can. So that low range signal is crossed over to the sub, which has more power and was specifically designed to handle it. The crossover frequency isn't a brick wall where the speaker just stops producing sound though. Instead, it actually rolls off, meaning that the level of output for each frequency beyond that point gets progressively lower. So if you want to find the absolute perfect crossover for your speakers, then you can always use a calibrated measurement mic with software like Room EQ Wizard and measure the frequency response of the speakers in your particular room. You then set the crossover at 10 Hz above the minus 3 dB point and then you'll be all set. But for those with neither the means or will to do that, each manufacturer has the frequency response of their speakers in the spec sheets posted online, assuming it's a modern speaker. Now, don't mistake the plus or minus 3 dB frequency range with the speaker's internal crossover, which in a two or three way speaker determines which part of the audio signal is sent to the tweeter, mid range, or the bass driver. The internal crossover is determined by the speaker's crossover circuitry, so us consumers can change that. But it's good to know nonetheless so you don't get them mixed up. So let's really get down to business. The crossover recommended in most systems is 80 Hz. That's the THX recommendation and they know a thing or two about sound. To do this though, there are some changes that need to be made to your receiver in some cases. 
In the speaker settings, your speakers must be changed to small. Now this has nothing to do with the actual physical size of your speakers, but what it does is enable bass management for that speaker. So the crossover settings you selected will actually work. Sound gets less directional the lower the frequency gets, so the aim is to not be able to tell where the bass is coming from, and that's why the bass transition from your speakers to the subwoofer is so seamless when you have good crossover settings. Now I know what some of you are saying. You're saying, but Villa, just my rear surrounds go down to 30 hertz, my front speakers go all the way down to negative 15 hertz. There's no such thing by the way, but it is a fair point. The fact is, these settings I just mentioned won't work for everyone. If you have really capable speakers, why cut them off at the knees? Why not let them just run free? That's where we start using those spec sheets I mentioned earlier. So what we have to do is use those to find the crossover more suitable for your system. For these clipsers, for example, the towers go all the way down to 32 hertz. So instead of crossing them over at 80 hertz, I decided to cross them at 40 hertz. I wouldn't go lower than the plus or minus 3 dB point because at that point you'd potentially lose information and that would be counterproductive. Another example is the BMW Center, which has a frequency response of 70 hertz to 22 kilohertz plus or minus 3 dB. So I decided to cross that over at 80 hertz, which makes sense. I listen to a lot of two channel music, so my fronts are normally set to large, which makes them full range. So normally the crossover wouldn't be applied to them. That may be fine for music, but it wouldn't be good for movies. Because in that case, the speaker would be sent frequencies that it can't necessarily reproduce. Some receivers, like my Denon for example, has an awesome setting where you can set the subwoofer to LFE plus main. When you do that, there's a crossover you set where the subwoofer will actually help out the towers with bass reproduction below that frequency. So I have that specific crossover set at 60Hz just for the Pioneer release towers and at 40Hz for the reference Premier towers. I determined that based on the spec sheet. The Pioneers have a low of 38Hz while the reference Premiers have a low of 32Hz. As far as the low pass frequency, the LPF, where the sub is concerned, you know, the frequency where the sub crosses over to the mains. This should be set at 120 hertz in the receiver. That's pretty much the standard. Set it any lower and you might end up losing information. If your subwoofer has an LFE knob on the back, then make it as high as possible so that it can be managed from the receiver. Assuming a receiver has that setting, of course. Look, in reality, these are all recommended settings and there is no one setting that should work for everyone because everyone has different tastes and different things they're looking for. And if you're not happy with it, I hope I at least armed you with enough information so you can go out and make the tweaks necessary so you can be happy with your setup. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, as well as your setup and what crossovers you're using. And don't forget to like the video if you liked the video. Also, if you have some time, you can check out the reviews and demos I did of the clipsers. It's totally free. And while you're at it, follow me on social media at the Villa Man. As always, this has been your friend and neighborhood Villa Man saying, peace.